Now we're going to look at capacitor discharge. With the flash camera, the battery cannot cause enough current due to the fact that the battery itself has an internal resistance and you need to draw a lot of current to be able to cause a flash like this. So we have to put the charge on a capacitor so that when this discharges, we have a large current, which means it discharges in a flash. Here we have the capacitor, which we're about to charge. We apply the voltage, the charge moves onto the plates. Let's say we connect it with 20 volts. The cell, or the battery, starts to push the charge around onto the plates. Since the plates are quite close to each other, the charge is attracted to the charge on the facing plate. Now, we look at how the charge changes with time. To start with, there is no charge on the plates. Then, first of all, the charge starts to move on the plates, and then the charge will increase. Here again, the charge increases, and we plot a graph of how the charge changes with time. As more charge goes on, the charge increases. However, it increases at a smaller and smaller rate. And the, and the graph typically curves over like this. So as the charge starts to fill the plates, this charge that's on the plate resists the arrival of more charge. So this is what we end up with. Now eventually the plates get full of charge and this stops any more charge from arriving. But so the potential difference across the plates will be equal to the battery voltage, which is 20 volts in this case. So the plates are fully charged. When the capacitor is fully charged, the potential difference across the capacitor is equal to the battery voltage. Now, if we look at a graph of how the potential difference across the plates changes with time, it looks very close to the charge as you know that Q is equal to Vc. Now we know that the potential difference goes up to maximum value, which is the battery voltage, which will be 20 volts. Now how does the current change? You know at the start the charge is flowing freely, so we start with a large current and it gets smaller with time. So this is the typical curve of the charging plates. What is the relationship between the charge time graph on the left and the current time graph on the bottom right. Now you can see here that since the charge is changing a lot with time, we have a steep gradient. The gradient is the rate of flow of charge, which is basically delta Q by delta T. We have a large value there, so the gradient gives the current. Here we have a smaller current, smaller gradient, and here we have an even smaller current, which is a smaller gradient. So the gradient of a charge time graph gives the current. Now let's look at the maths of this current decay. This is a graph we've just seen. This kind of graph where values depend on the previous value and it, and it forms this kind of graph is called an exponential decay curve. And this is the equation that we need to deal with. What does this decay curve depend on? It depends on the time constant, tau. Now let's look at discharging a capacitor. First, we switch to A, um, and the capacitor charges very quickly because there is no resistor. Then we switch to B, and the charge discharges through the resistor, but quite slowly because there is a resistance there. Now this discharge, or the rate of discharge, depends on the resistance of the resistor and the capacitance of the capacitor. And this tau is equal to RC, it's basically the product of the resistance times by the capacitance. This is called the time constant. And this is the tau that we get in this equation, which is the I, how the current changes with time. But on this occasion we have the potential difference, not the current. But the graph is going to be pretty much the same. It's going to have the, exactly the same shape. So the current against time graph looks the same as the voltage against time graph, which will look the same as the charge against time graph. They will look all identical. 
only the, the y-axis will be different, but the curve will be the same. With the capacitor discharge, we do not consider the half-life, but we consider rather the time constant, which is RC. Tau is equal to RC. Um, and the equation for a voltage, for example, is V is equal to V0 e to the minus T over tau, or, over, or rather T over RC. Now we've already said that tau is equal to RC, so you can substitute RC for tau. But let's take an example when the time is equal to RC. So we'll take this interval of time here, when that's equal to RC, this value here is going to be RC. So that's basically RC divided by RC will give 1. So V is equal to V0 e to the minus 1, or rather V is equal to V0 divided by E. What this means is that the time constant is RC. And after RC seconds, this is the time for the potential difference across the capacitor to drop to 1 over E, in other words 1 divided by roughly 2.7, of its original value. 2 RC is the time for it to drop to 1 over E times by 1 over E, which is basically 1 over E squared of its original value. And 3 RC is the time for it to drop to 1 over E cubed of its original value. So we start off V0. This is the time for it to go out to an, an eth, 1 over E of its original value. This is 1 over E of that value. This is 1 over E of that value. Let's look at a problem. A capacitor of 1000 microfarads with a potential difference of 12 volts is discharged through a 500 ohm resistor. You have to calculate the potential difference across the capacitor after 1.5 seconds. So this is the equation we're looking at the voltage, the potential difference, is equal to V0 e to the minus T over RC. Substitute the values and we end up with a value of 0 0.6 volts after 1.5 seconds. Another problem, a capacitor of 1000 microfarads with a potential difference of 12 volts is discharged through a 500 ohm resistor. How long will it take to discharge to half its original value? Now this is the equation we use, or we could use this one, we could find that the time taken for the voltage to half or the time taken for the charge to half, or the time taken for the current to half. They will all give the same value in time. But let's take charge, for example. Q is equal to Q0 e to the minus T over RC. Now let's say, if it's going to half its value, this charge is equal to um, half of the original charge value. So 0 0.5 is equal to E to minus T over RC. Substitute the values. So 0 0.5 is equal to e to the minus t over 0 0.5. But we need to get rid of the e, so we need to find that natural log of both sides. So log of 0 0.5 is equal to minus t over 0 0.5. And that gives a value of t is equal to minus the log of 0 0.5 divided by 2, which is 0 0.347 seconds. So to summarize, this is when we get a discharge through the resistor. The graph for the voltage across the, across the capacitor will look like this. These are the equations. T tau is equal to RC. This is the time constant for that circuit. This time constant, RC, is the time for the charge or the current or the voltage to drop to 1 over E of its original value.